hi Capricorn I hope you're all doing well what's going on with you what's going on with your energy I tried to record your message last week but there was something still kind of transmuting still in flow not quite settled yet I'm hearing settled in the dust okay so maybe something is settling out here for you uh, this this time whenever you come across this reading my readings are timeless so uh, I'm also hearing um, interesting tracking movement it's like you know when you see something out of the corner of your eye and it's like moving and I don't know something's gonna come into your awareness because it's shifting because it's moving your ability your ability to track movement is heightened okay this could be a metaphor right um, you're able to see something shape shift I'm getting interesting okay we're gonna get into your general message here Capricorn and see what's going on for you I'm using a, a few different decks I'm using the alchemy deck uh, by Kim Kranz I'm using the earth moon and shadow oracle and also the tarot of the holy spectrum so I switched up the placements of the cards like I usually do a very anyways uh, so if you see me looking over here it's because I have the placements written out because uh, I changed things up interesting yeah it's like things are changing something's moving around something's shifting here and you're very aware of it you're perceptive you can tell okay let's pull out one of these uh, alchemy cards I'm gonna put it face down and we'll look at it at the end of the reading here for you Capricorn if this reading does resonate with you there will be an extended available you can find a link to that in the description box below um, if it doesn't resonate with you that's okay no worries you can check out your other playment playments your, hmm. your other placements okay let's let's forget that and let's keep going um, interesting energy Capricorn something a little serious here okay <laughs> that doesn't mean bad okay let's see we need one card for the end this no for Capricorn I'm also sensing someone's having it could be you or someone else having um, fears over making the wrong decision with something Let's get the card out for the theme of the reading for Capricorn. We have blue moon, opportunities, divine power, and clarity. And shadow and light, demons, shadow, self, and integration. Yeah, it's interesting energy here. It's a little bit of like hesitancy. It's uh, again, I could be t picking up someone else's energy that you're uh, I'm hearing that you're used to. OK, <laughs> that you're close to that you're used to um, or this could be you. But somebody here is their clarity is being clouded and the opportunities that are available to them because of their uh, shadow. Someone has gotten used to the shadow self or the yeah the shadow self the voice of the shadow which could be fear which could be a voice that says you're not seeing something clearly uh what is this shadow falling in love Ooh, capricorn you having fears because you're falling in love or maybe somebody else here with you somebody's shadow is activated because of love there's fears around love here. What am I getting here? What is happening with Capricorn? Obscene. Hardship. Bad influence. Uh, somebody is associating love, interference here, uh, with negative emotions, with hardship, okay? Somebody hasn't haven't had an easy time in love and when they feel those feelings of divine power and clarity of the opportunity of love approaching, it's like they close right up and they feel like anybody is, is uh, somebody is going to have a bad influence on them or the idea of twin flames I'm hearing is obscene. 
I don't, I'm not saying my opinion either way, but that's what I'm getting here. Interesting. Okay, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Doesn't really, yeah, eight of swords. Doesn't really matter. But the point is here, yeah, look, five of swords here too. And we have like this book here with the swords, mistake, and then somebody writing up the solution. Somebody's being very cautious, very careful about opening their heart and falling in love. Now, this could be falling in love with a passion project, with a, a, a career path. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person, okay? But for most of you, it is. So let's see here, Spirit. Let's go a layer deeper into the message for Capricorn. What's going on here? Two more for Capricorns. Wherever you have Capricorn in your chart, if you're a cross watcher, this could be your message. I'm really not sure if I'm reading your energy or someone you're close to. It seems to be like an equal split here. Yeah, look, the lovers and the star. It's like it could be you or it could be them. <laughs> okay, so you're going to have to discern. It could be both of you too. Okay. Current energy. Three of cups. Came out in reverse, but let's see. Give me one more for Capricorn's current energy. Actually, give me one for the theme of the reading. One more for the theme of the reading, Spirit. One more for the theme of the reading for Capricorn. Ooh, Capricorn, what is this energy? It's like kind of frenetic. The tower, <laughs> yeah, I was just about to light this up. What, Capricorn, if this is you, let's take a deep breath. But if it's not, well, let's take a deep breath anyway. <laughs> Interesting how I blew that out. Hmm. Okay, so the someone needs to take a deep breath because like the flame here is not serving a purpose. Like that somebody is getting um, inflamed. Somebody's freaking out, I feel, a little bit with the tower card coming in. Somebody's like realizing they're in love or they're falling in love and they're like, oh shit, no, <laughs> can't have that happen. Um, tell me more about Capricorn's energy here, spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have the seven of pentacles. Let's see what you don't see coming here is judgment. Uh, your opportunity. What's Capricorn's opportunity here? The King of Wands. What's the challenge? Is the Nine of Pentacles. Your advice. Your advice here. The Ten of Pentacles. What's going to manifest in the next three months? the Hierophant, and the person you're dealing with or the energy affecting you most at this time. You're getting guidance here from Spirit in the next three months, um, like messages hardcore, okay? See how these two figures here are whispering in her ear, telling her divine wisdom? Okay, I feel like there, maybe there's two specific guides you're working with, but there are guides here helping you out, helping you figure out how to handle something or navigate a situation in your life. The person who you're dealing with that's affecting you most at this time could be a situation, doesn't have to be a particular person, but they're coming out here as the Six of Pentacles. Whoa. Capricorn, I'm getting a very specific story. This is not going to be for all of you. So there will there is another message here, but I have to say it because I'm seeing it. You and somebody else are both giving your energy to other people. Okay? And maybe this is somebody that you're in love with or that you have a strong connection with, but you're both like giving out your energy elsewhere. See that? rather than giving to one another okay this could be like you're in a relationship and you're both too concentrated on something outside of the relationship it's taking away from the relationship or this may be someone in the past here you're you're deeply tied together spiritually but then you you have in the 3d realm you each have a different partner something like that i don't know it's something 
Um, you're not, yeah. You've turned your backs here on one another in a sense. The sun. Queen of Pentacles. For some of you, this is definitely like focusing more on the material reality rather than on the concept or experience, I should say, of love. Somebody is scared of love. <laughs> That's clear, it seems like. Okay, your overall energy, which again could be someone else. I'm not sure who's who here. Uh, Three of Cups and the Seven of Pentacles. This is like, I'm happy with what I have. I'm happy with what I have. I don't need any more here. Um, for some of you who are in a third party kind of situation, whether that's with a like an, another lover or a friends involved in another friend, you know, like three, there's three energies <laughs> involved in a situation. However, that happens. Um, this is like, I'm okay with it. I'm just okay with it. So either someone else is feeling this or you are. Somebody here is not budging. They're, they're just, they're just uh, not really growing, I feel. They're just chilling in an energy. And what, what do you, like, is this good or is this bad spirit? What is this about? Seven of Swords. This is not good. <laughs> this is not good, okay? Someone's f not facing the music of something or trying to deny something to themselves so that they can keep things easy. For some of you, you might be in a connection with someone and it's like they're um, continuing to live as if they're single. It's like you just started dating them and now that it's like nothing's, yeah, they're not acting like they have a partner for some. These could all just be examples of how the energy could manifest. They don't have to be literal, okay? But yeah. Somebody does from their heart desire more, but their ego mind is blocking them. The inner demons here. Why? Why is this spirit? Why? Why are they letting the inner demons do this? Strength and the star. This person might have been through something before, the hangman, and have, has recently healed from it, gotten out of it, or this could be you, right? Uh, I'm gonna go crazy, keep switching that. <laughs> Just take, I trust that you're intelligent to do it yourself, okay? Um, yeah, but this person, whoever this is, <laughs> uh, they've been through something recently, and they're scared to go through it again. But, I don't necessarily feel like they, they are going to go through a similar experience. They're projecting their past experience onto the present. And they feel like stopping themselves from falling in love is a strength. It's a, it's a show of healing. Like, I'm not so stupid to just fall in love now. That's definitely a shadow of talking. Shadow wound, right? Okay, what you don't see coming is awakening, judgment. This is a revelation here. Now, there's a whole bunch of people. I don't know if you can see this clearly. There's a whole bunch of people lying on the ground, blindfolded, and she's sitting up taking her blindfold off. Okay, so this person, whoever we're talking about here, is going to have an awakening that they're letting their shadow run the show. And we don't want that. <laughs> I said that in another reading once. We really don't want the shadow to run the show, okay? Because then we self-sabotage. The shadow, when the shadow runs the show, it will trick us into thinking we're super powerful and we're super like dark and you know, all that Pluto in the shadow, basically. It's Pluto energy in the shadow. But I'm, I'm hearing retribution. But ultimately, that energy comes back. It can't subsist forever because it's not based on a light code, the frequency of love I'm hearing. So it can't uh, regenerate itself. Interesting. It needs a different host. Okay, whoa, what are we talking about here? It's like the dark energy needs to jump from host to host. And yeah, so an entity needs to attach here. Whoa, okay, hold on a second. Spirit's talking about when somebody lets their shadow run the show and they feel super powerful in a, in a maniacal kind of way, 
they just well we know this they just keep hurting other people so that the and the energy the shadow energy the entity can jump to feed off of person to person yeah we know that so it's a never-ending cycle of pain essentially when we let that happen and moments of feeling powerful either by overcoming pain or by inflicting pain but there's never any real growth. It's a very miserable cycle to be in. Uh, yeah, so spirit, I'm sorry if I'm like losing you here. I'm just trying to channel the energy in. But but spirit wants somebody to work from their heart, from the frequency of love. And I feel like what you don't see coming is somebody is going to do that. You or someone else. Ten of Cups. Understand the greater, grander purpose for love. Like, love is not just here to make us have dopamine hits and feel all good about ourselves and etc. No, love is here to help us transmute and transform energies and to recognize our own power and the power of others and the power of humanity not just humanity, the power of all. Think about that love you can have, that deep loving bond you can have with an animal or even a plant for some, you know? It's like mm -hmm. that, that pure form of energy is very powerful in shifting reality. And somebody's realizing that here. Beautiful. Okay, your opportunity, King of Wands. I talked to Taurus had this card, um, and I talked to Taurus about this. This is, for me, looks like a heart chakra opening. This guy's standing with his arms wide open. The color green represents heart chakra. This is like being open here to love. So this is the opportunity here for you or for someone else is to really feel Pluto in the in the light form, power in the light form. Love, the power of love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. You can do much more with the energy of love. Justice. See? Mm -hmm. you can bring things into balance here. You have the opportunity right now to bring something into balance. Okay, and <clears throat> yeah, if you have met someone recently and you're starting to fall in love with them or you're rekindling a love with someone and you're freaking out and you're scared, spirit's saying, this is nothing to fear. This is something to be grateful for that you have the ability to tap into this energy to this frequency because it is super generating enlightening i'm hearing something like beholden to you <laughs> i don't know and if you're dealing with someone who you feel like is freaking out because they're falling in love with you they're fighting here with their shadow self and with the tower card coming in here it's like they're freaking out inside because i feel like they're having an awakening they're feeling the push here to recognize that the ten of cups is a true possibility it's it's something that can and will happen i'm hearing for all i don't know that's what i heard <laughs> i don't know maybe for all involved i don't know okay the challenge here is the nine of pentacles. This is self-focused, right? Thinking about how to be independent and not need anybody. Now, love isn't codependency. That's not what love is. And I feel like whoever's freaking out is associating love with codependency, okay? Having to need someone, having to rely on someone, okay? Okay. Be grateful if you can rely on someone. I'm hearing that song. Um, sometimes we all need a shoulder to lean on. <laughs> yeah, you know that song? Yeah. 
Okay, so it's like, just because you have somebody to lean on, just because you, you know, you can rely on someone doesn't make you any less sovereign. It makes you connected. That's a, that's a blessing. Okay. And the, the challenge here for whoever the, this is, is to recognize that you are sovereign, that you are autonomous. Okay. That nobody can control you. You control yourself. You are independent and coming into union with someone does not make you automatically dependent or weak. Eight of Cups. And it's not about going back, backwards either, okay? Especially if this is somebody who you've already had a relationship with and now you feel like, oh, I'm just going backwards in time with them to a place of destruction. Spirit is saying it doesn't have to be that way. Not at all. The magician, you create the reality. You decide how that's going to work out. Well, I mean, both of you will ultimately. But if you come into this with a, a, a fear and feeling like it's going to a bad influence, it's going to be a hardship, then that's what will manifest. Our thoughts manifest our reality. Okay? So the Ten of Pentacles here for uh, your advice, <laughs> what you should embrace, what energy you should embrace. Yeah, because it's like whoever this is is stuck at the Nine of Pentacles thinking this is the bee's knees, like I'm super independent. But the reality is the Ten of Pentacles is much better where there's other people around, where there's connection. There's people to celebrate with here. There's stability, community. Okay? If there's nothing wrong with being alone and being independent, that's great. And we all need a time in our life, I feel, where we do feel that feeling and we do learn lessons to give us that reassurance that we are okay navigating this world on our own should somebody have to leave us in one way or another. It's good to feel that resolve inside, but that's not like the finish line. The finish line here of our life is to connect with others. That's really the goal here, is to recognize our unity collectively, but also with another. Okay, and spirit wants you or whoever this is to feel that. So what energies are leading you out in the next three months? The Hierophant. Well, this is, well, it can be <laughs> um, like marriage or some kind of contract. But I feel like this is more spirit giving guidance here to whoever the, uh, this is. Okay, guiding, sharing wisdom. About love, King of Cups about sharing your your cup, you know, with another, about how special and beautiful that is and what an act of strength it is to love somebody. It's a, let, don't underestimate that. It's a huge strength. People who are able to love other people are really strong. We are in a matrix reality that at all angles, is making it difficult to express love or to engage in a in a, um, a union with the one I'm hearing. <laughs> okay, that our matrix reality is constantly pumping us with fear and frequencies of hatred. Okay, and so when we love others, we break through the matrix. And a lot of people can't stand all this talk about love. I'm sure some people have clicked off by now. And that's okay. That's okay because it's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's, a, it's an act of strength to love. Okay? It's a process to get there as well, especially when we've been wounded. But 
whoever this is can get there. And I'm going to go into the extent, I'm going to pull out this card that we pulled out from the alchemy and read it in a second. But before I say that, I'm going to go into the extent and I'm going to look at like what's going to happen next because spirit is really just kind of telling me like what's going on, what the background is. But I want to find out like, do we enter the frequency of love here? Do we actually stop falling and find our place in the frequency of love? You know? Do we ground ourselves, not fall, but do we ground ourselves in love here, whoever this is? Okay, so let's see what card we got from the alchemy deck. Virgin's milk. Interesting. Oh, my stomach growled. Sorry if you could hear that. Okay, interesting card. Let's see what this is all about. Innocence, naivete, purity. In alchemy, virgin's milk is a mystical substance supposedly coming from the virgin's breast. The alchemist asks, how can it be? How can milk come from one not carrying a child? That is precisely the nuanced teaching of virgin's milk. When studied as an alchemical concept, it points to a lack of awareness or experience that the alchemist would rather not reveal. Yes, this milky substance is a symbol of purity and innocence, but its shadowed side is naivety and even denial. When the virgin milk appears, discernment and honesty must be applied to the work. Is something being glossed over, rushed, or presented as perfect? There are likely complexities that need to be addressed so the alchemist can gain the maturity to handle what's next. It says, watch the movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Patience is the remedy. It says this archetype can be seen in child prodigies and those expected to grow up too quickly. It is remedied by admitting exactly where you are at humor and humility help. Just one drop of virgin's milk can be medicinal. It can help the alchemist act as if know your measure. I feel like here spirit is talking about, well, one about somebody who had to grow up too fast and maybe didn't experience what love really feels like. Maybe wasn't given the opportunity to love or be loved. And now that feels like foreign or dangerous in some way as an interference here to their existence. Two, I feel like spirit is saying that somebody is naively thinking that things can just continue on the way they are without grounding in love, you know, that they can just continue not expressing love or not allowing themselves to enter into that frequency because that's naive spirit saying. For some of you, it's inevitable, okay, that you that you and whoever this is are going to be in an energy of love with one another. All right. Interesting reading. Capricorn this is very interesting. Okay. Hmm. okay I'm going to go into your extended. We're going to go a layer deeper and see what comes up. But if this is where you go, I love you so much.